Welcome back to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. This is part three of our muscle building series. Uh, so go back and watch part one, part two, if you missed those, because this one's more advanced hypertrophy concepts. All right, so we're going to start out. Uh, this is something we talked about with our personal clients last week. So stretch overload is one of those advanced hypertrophy concepts. And I've been seeing a lot of research around it recently. I feel like there was kind of a trend in the fitness industry where a lot of people were talking about it. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you kind of start this one off her, but what should people know about stretch overload? Uh, well, stretch overload is again, the best way to finish the target muscle. So let's say we're working on chest and someone's like, man, I want to get stronger and, and bench more. So they start doing lockouts. Okay. A couple seconds here and there, they're going to get stronger. They're not going to get any size and they're not going to build any muscle because they don't have enough tension on that specific muscle for enough time. So uh, as far as stretching goes, at the bottom of a, a bench press is the most vulnerable position, the weakest position. If you had to start from there, right? Instead of picking the weight up, lowering it and pushing it up, you had to stop on your chest, sit there for three or four seconds and then come up. And that's just heavy. Yeah. That's strictly that muscle that you're targeting. So the triceps don't come in, the shoulders don't come in, it's strictly chest. So when I'm finishing off my chest, and I can't do another full rep because my smaller muscles are given out. I stay in that stretch position for chest that's at the bottom and go up maybe six inches just until I start to try to activate my shoulders and finish off the chest. Okay. So I'm stretching this and that burn that you feel, okay, is literally physically tearing the muscle. It's actually tearing muscle. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good place to start with it. Yeah. It's when you think about the stretch position of different movements. I want you guys to try to conceptualize it. It's, it's like at the bottom of a squat, you know, that's, that's when your muscles are fully lengthened, fully stretched. That's where a lot of that hypertrophy comes from. Like Herb said in the bench press all the way at the bottom, when your pecs are fully stretched, I think an even, you know, maybe even, even better examples on dumbbells where you can get even more of that stretch, you know, yeah. you can kind of get even more of that. Um, or on like a pec fly when it's all the way back there, like that fully stretched position. And so what Herb is saying is like, you know, and this isn't something that you need to incorporate into every set. Like Herb said, it's like, you know, it can be towards the end or maybe you're like your top set and you're just wanting to get a, a little bit more out of that movement. It's like, you can uh, just sometimes even do like Herb was saying, like half reps or pause reps at the bottom to, to really maximize the growth out of that stretch position. So that's right. what we're talking about when we're talking about stretch overload. And again, right. these are advanced hypertrophy concepts, but if you're just trying to get that little extra, like take you to the next level. And what we said to our clients is like, uh, say you're at the end of your training block and you're basically, you know, RPE nine, 10 on things. And you want to even take it to that next level, you know, at the end of those top sets, like get, a, get some stretch overload, get a little bit of extra out of that muscle. So, yeah. yeah. And, and again, that's stretching during the workout. They're stretching where you stretch the tissue that the muscle sits in, the fascia tissue. So like you say, at the end of a workout, I'll just take the flies and stretch as humanly possible or get your partner to grab your arms and stretch you. Because now you're not really stretching the muscle. You're trying to stretch the sac that it sits in and get that muscle sac to be bigger, i.e. the muscle can grow, right? The sac gets bigger, the muscle can get bigger. So it's kind of coming at it from two different angles. So yeah, yeah you, can, you can go down the rabbit hole when it comes to hypertrophy for sure. Yeah. One, another example that I just want to throw in there, because it kind of just made me think of it. And there, there's some people out there that literally, and this isn't my philosophy on it, but some people like they get their stretching through their movements. Like they, they get their mobility and their stretching. Like the, they just make sure that they get good stretches when they're doing their exercises. I like to still statically stretch at the end of the exercise, still get that good stretch. Um, but the example that I was going to bring up is like on a dumbbell deadlift, the stretch I feel in my hamstrings is like, it's like on not compared to anything else that I'm doing for hamstrings. Like I, I just feel such a good stretch because you can get those dumbbells. You can go so low. You can control that eccentric portion of the movement. Um, so I really like that stretch overload on that movement. That's another example. Um, but yeah, you're right. We can go down the rabbit hole on the, on this one. So let's, let's kind of move on to the next advanced type of top, topic or concept. And that's going to be cell volumizing. So what should people know, Herb, about cell volumizing? Well, first of all, you, you know, you look at the supplements that help volumize the cell. In other words, hydrate the cell, uh, liquid, water, all that good stuff, uh, glycogen, all that in your muscle. Um, you, you're going you're, you're gonna to need to take creatine, 
You're going to need to drink a lot of water. Uh, we talked a little bit about glycerol. I haven't looked into that lately. See if they're still using that. That's old school 80s shit. Um, but you're trying to pump as much volume and in a much uh, substance. Again, when you eat, right, you're going to take your amino acids, put that in your blood and pump that into the muscle and try to get those aminos to start healing right away. So when you think of cell volumize or uh, um, cell volumizing, you're trying to increase the size of the cell by what you're putting into it. So one way is to get a good pump with a lot of creatine, a lot of good amino acids in your body and just try to swell, right? You're doing a lot of damage. So you're ripping, tearing, and flaming. So you're growing the size of that muscle damage. You just want to make sure everything's there to help repair it. So cell volumizing to me, I think of trying to get all my nutrition into my cell, right? More or less after my workout. So I'm getting it in there before, but after my workout, I feel that big pump. I'm like, all right, everything's flowing into my muscle. Now let's get that, let's get that. Um, amino acids in there. Let's spike my insulin. Let's get that stuff shoveled into my cells, get that protein in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's a good place to start for sure. And then, um, the way I like to think about it, cause I've, I always forget there's two different types of hypertrophy. There's like sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And I think this is basically what cell volumizing in mm -hmm. is, is like you're filling your muscles with more fluid and you're like filling it up with blood and everything like that. And then there's myofibril hypertrophy where you're actually like tearing the muscle fibers right? right so um so yeah so i like to think about it that and i feel like a lot of people don't know that um but you, this you, is you like to think in terms of big words <laughs> yeah. i'm using the little words with pictures of pus. <laughs> yeah. but to make it super simple guys like self volumizing yeah. um like herb said it's like filling the muscles like getting that pump like just think of chasing the pump that's basically what we're talking about here um and you know it, it's not the most important thing when it comes to growing muscle but like we said, it's, these are advanced hypertrophy concepts. Th these are things like when you're trying to take it to the next level, you know, start focusing on this stuff. When you've got your bread and butter, when you got your basics like nailed down, start focusing on these things. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so a lot of times for our clients, like we have them kind of chase that pump towards the end of their workout. Cause like Herb was saying, like this, this type of stuff with the cell volumizing, when you're filling the muscles up with fluid, that actually helps with the recovery process. And then like you said, you get, then you get your nutrients in your creatine, your protein to get those amino acids. And it's like, yeah, you're just, it's the perfect storm to, to fill up those muscles. So anything else on that, on your end, Herb? No, just again, the reason why we're having this discussion, you know, we kind of talked about this with some other clients. It's not just three sets of 12 go home. <laughs> There's a lot more that goes into what you and I do for our clients to get them the most optimum workout. We know they don't want to hit the gym like you and I. So I need my client getting 99.9% .9 efficiency when they're at the gym, understanding how to destroy that muscle so they can get home. And once they see the, the results, it's a little more easy, right? Yeah. yeah. But again, we got to remember that not everybody's as crazy as you and I and just love to get to the gym. <laughs> but yeah. again, the way we learn this stuff is we apply it. There's, I'm never going to have you do an exercise I haven't done. I already know what the outcome is going to be. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have you do it, it's because it didn't work, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's it it, it you got to put the work in, you got to put the thought into it. Why is my muscle growing? Just ask yourself that one time. Hit Google, you'll drive yourself nuts. In about an hour, you'll be like, I'm walking away. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so again, best workout possible, highest quality food possible, best sleep possible. Um, yeah. Now go ahead and try to figure that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the the three sets of twelve and go home. It's like it's not that simple because when we really dig into it, when and we have a lot of clients that are like very beginner, like they're just getting into it. It's like, yeah, they, they get in the gym. We start, they start sending us videos and they're doing, say we're, they're just doing like a tricep extension. They could be looking around, you know, they, they, they did their three sets of 12, but did they get much out of that exercise? No. Like it's kind of a waste of time. Like you want to be getting close to failure, which we're looking for. Like we have an eye, we can see your videos. We can see if you're getting close to failure, we can see that intensity in those videos. How are you performing the exercise? Are you focusing on the stretch portion? All this, all this stuff. Like we're, we can really dial it in when we see videos. That's why we're big on getting those from clients. Um, especially if you're brand new, it's not just about form. It's how, how are we performing? How close, how high is our intensity? There's so many different things to look at. So it's way more than three sets of 12. <laughs> yep. So, but on that note, you know, what are, would you say, cause a lot of people think just, you know, they think hypertrophy, they think 10 to 15 reps. You can just say that that's it. Like what, what's kind of optimal as far as rep ranges, which people be uh, kind of paying attention to as far as rep ranges for, for muscle growth. So again, this is controversial. 
Um, so I'll explain it, but I would say anywhere between 12 and 20, 12 and 15 for sure. But what I'm talking about is this, when I hit 12, I'm seeing baby Jesus on a cloud. I don't know if I can get these next three. It's not a matter of 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I'm done. It's we're getting it done, but it's higher reps. So there's an extreme amount of burn. Um, can you get bigger on shorter or, or on smaller uh, three to five reps? I've seen it done. As soon as you hear the argument from Mike Menzer that you're going to do one set, that's all you're going to do, and you're going to grow like a weed, you're going to take a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger who trained arms every fucking day, and he had 22 and a half inch arms. So the, when you say, when you have a good argument scientifically, then you got a character like that. You're like, what do I do? Everybody's different. That's why you got to try it, right? Got to throw the ego out the wall, out the window, try it. If it works, do it. I don't care if you're lifting 10 pounds and everybody's looking at you like a little girl, do it if it works. Because in the long run, they're going to be, you oh, no shit, man, I'm going to, right? I was telling one of my clients today, because he was asking me about haters. And I said, one thing about my haters is they're all taking notes. So... Again, there's a lot of things you can do, but myself specifically, I my first warm up set. If I'm going to warm up, I don't walk on the treadmill to warm my chest up, guys. I do chest. I do 30 reps under tension, holding the last one, squeezing. I already feel a pretty good burn on my first workout. Okay, and then my reps, 12 to 15, but it's that would probably be maybe six to eight for other people because they're just not going to push it like I don't want to push it. So intensity, yeah. mindset. Yeah, I feel like. I've got a lot of thoughts on this. Yeah. Cause you're <laughs> so, a power lifter back in the day, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, so I would say like, you know, pretty much what the research shows is it can be anywhere from five to 30 reps and, and it can be optimal for hypertrophy, but it kind of a little bit along the lines of what you were saying, Herb, it matters how you're doing those reps, how close to failure are you getting on those reps? Um, the overall volume is something like within the workout that we want to pay attention to as well. Because like, we also want to take into account what's, what's practical with the workout. Like, because my rule of thumb with overall volume for a specific muscle group is within the sets that I'm doing for that exercise, I try to get around 30 total reps on that exercise. I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb. That's what I kind of live by. So if your, if your main goal is hypertrophy, are you going to do 10 sets of three <laughs> for an exercise? It's like, that's not practical. Right. So, so a lot of times what's practical is those higher rep ranges to get that hypertrophy in a, in a decent amount of time. Right. Um, but I'm just going to speak anecdotally for me, you know, just, and again, like this isn't kind of going along with the research, but I've just noticed, and I've been doing this for a long time and I know how my body works. If I only do higher rep ranges, I start to get weaker, even in those higher rep ranges. Like, you know, my, my sets on like dumbbells, like I, I can't even touch the hundreds because I'm like, man, like I just feel weak. Right. So I, I know that there's some carryover from the strength work into the hypertrophy work that I'm doing. So again, that's, that's, that's just kind of my own kind of experience with it. But I think that's something that is worth paying attention to as well. So you have any experience with that herb, anything? That, that yeah, that yeah. you know, again, when I used to fight, I did a lot more static training, a lot more negatives. I didn't do any contractions at all. It was all static and negatives. I mean, I was doing, I was wrapping my elbows and my wrists and I was holding like 500 pounds on the bench just, <laughs> and it was, it was right for that. Um, did I get bigger? No, but I got strong as shit. Yeah. Um, here's my problem. Again, I'm 59 years old. So for me to get under and I benched 440s my max I've done. I'm never going to come near that again. I try to do that shit, my joint's going to be screaming. Yeah. <laughs> so at my point in time, I've done the strength thing. I've been there, done it. I'm good. I just don't want my joints to hurt anymore. So again, I'm much more into the high uh, rep range. And if I'm low, so I can do 15 reps, it'll take me a minute. I can do eight reps, take me a minute. All right. So if, if I am doing lower reps, I try to keep the tension on there longer. Yeah. I, I'll squeeze at the bottom, like you say, hold for three seconds, explode, really lower it. So I'm still under tension. It might only be six, eight reps, but it's still the time. Yeah. Right. And like you said, Kate, who doesn't want to be bigger and stronger? Yeah. <laughs> being yeah. bigger and just falling down and not being able to tie your own shoes is no good. Though. You got to be strong right. too. Right. right? Functional yeah. strength. That's yeah. what I usually tell my people when I'm training. I'm looking for overall functional strength. Yeah. And that, that's why doing these podcasts and trying to just like say 
one thing is optimal. It's, we can't really do it, right? Because um, someone that might be listening to this does care a little bit about strength, right? And they're like, okay, what rep ranges should I use? Um, but they also care about hypertrophy. It's like, it, we got to know what your specific goals are to give you a recommendation. And that's why all of our clients' programs are completely custom, right? Because say someone just absolutely did not care about strength whatsoever, and they they feel <laughs> like strength movements just tire them out for everything else they got going through. Like, I mean, you know, we work with ambitious professional adults. It's like some people just don't want to go through the the taxing strength, you know, tax on their body like that. Um, so what, for someone like that, we're just, yeah, let's, let's steer towards higher reps, low weight for someone like you, that's a little bit older herb. Like we don't want to tire the joints kind of same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's almost impossible on a podcast to say what's the most optimal rep range when it comes to this. Yeah. It's like, we, we need to see a bigger picture and kind of be able to uh, diagnose that. So, yeah, th th this is, this is, yeah, this is, this is proverbial um, sticky ground guys. Cause yeah. everybody's right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's right. I can give you an example, how three to five works and seven to nine work and 20 work. Yeah. But again, like everything that we do with our clients, everything works for a while yeah and, and then your body adapts and you have to change it yeah and i, I want to say too it's like I, I wrote a tweet on this this morning it's like i see a lot of beginner gym goers where they go wrong is they're trying to major in the minors right they're mm -hmm. trying to they're trying to major they're trying to pay attention to the things that aren't like the main things they're going to push them forward in their progress right they're like what supplement should i take what, what's the most optimal rep range for me? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, let's, let's nail down your calories and macros, you know, before you start worrying about this stuff, let's nail down just your consistency in the gym. Right. You know, and, th and then we can get to the nitty gritty of all this type of stuff. All right. That's where I see a lot of newbies go wrong. Yeah. So I, even though we're talking about advanced hypertrophy concepts on this one, I just want you guys to keep that in mind. So. Yeah. Yeah. And again, don't, if, if you, the ladies out there, don't get all freaked out. You're not going to get big accidentally. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get strong accidentally. Right. Then I was just thinking about one of my gals I trained. i um, never been in the gym in her entire life. Uh, yoga instructor. First time I had her do bench, I had to put a 20 pound bar on her. She ended up doing 120 on a bench press and it just blew her away. So what I want you guys to remember is there's more to this than muscle. When you do something you never thought you'd be able to overcome, you're looking for the next challenge. Right. You do those sets of 20 and you're like, I still will come bring it. Right. I'm going to try some fives now. Right. So accomplishing things like this is going to get you physically better, but it's also going to get you mentally stronger. And we all need that. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool. I think that's a pretty good place to, to wrap it up here. So guys, hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you missed it, go watch the first uh, two parts of this muscle building series. Uh, let us know in the comments. I'm not going to talk about my mustache this time. Let us know what you want to know more about. Like if you guys have an idea of like a three-part series for us, because we've enjoyed doing these last couple of three-part series. Um, other than that, put this stuff into practice right away. Um, we'll see you guys in the next video. But in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.